Delighted to say we're off to Spain now. We we're joined on the line by the Republic of Ireland International, Amber Barrett. Good morning to you, Amber. I don't know if Amber can hear us there. Good morning, lads. Thank you. you for having me on. Not at all. Delighted to chat with you. I don't know if there's a slight delay on the line there, but uh, hopefully it doesn't impinge too much. Obviously, you're in the middle of the uh, Pinatar uh, Cup there. You've uh, Russia upcoming. Uh, what's the what what uh, sort of prep are you doing at the minute? What stage of the week are you at? Obviously, ahead of the game tomorrow. Yeah, well, I think firstly, um, I think coming off the back of a really good result on Wednesday, I think the mood in the camp has been excellent this week. And obviously, we know um, three three games over a ten day period is going to be you know heavy going for for everybody. And um, preparation's been really good the last couple of days. Obviously, the girls played on on Wednesday. We're kind of looking more sort of recovery and all yesterday, and the rest of us have, have been really working hard. We trained after the game on. On Wednesday, the girls that didn't get game time, or you know, maybe didn't get a lot of game time, and you know, we're hopefully going to be getting our chance tomorrow um, in the game, which is you know, again, a great opportunity for everybody, and it's an, it's an opportunity for us to prove ourselves, and I think also you know, it's an opportunity for everybody in the squad to be comfortable in that you know, high pressure situation. Typically, like it's all unusual for any international team to have gotten so much time together, and uh, you know that it's obviously there's a cup involved, but at the same time, it's useful prep of ahead of what's ahead. What sort of stuff are you, are you working on? New stuff on the training ground? Are you, is it? Uh, yeah, what sort of thing have you been doing given that unique opportunity that you've had? Yeah, I think um, to be honest with you, I think we're trying to get the game plan that we're going to have against Sweden. Um, nailed down as best we can obviously you know when we're here we're still we're still playing oppositions that you know might have a different way of playing that Sweden do and that can pose a little bit of a a difficulty for us because it's not a like for like situation but I think you know Vera has definitely put the emphasis this week that it's on us and you know it's this week is about us and it's not about the other teams that are here and we're trying to you know fine-tune everything and I think as, as you said, it's three great competitive games to have, but ultimately this is all um, preparation for the next, you know, really, really crucial game in, in April against Sweden. And, you know, most important thing is to have a fit and healthy squad and what we have that. And I think now, you know, getting used to, I think, perfecting the formation and, you know, tweaking things that may, might have needed to be tweaked. And even, you know, we've done an analysis on other games that we had, you know, and just you can see the improvement that we're making all the time. and. I think it's difficult in this space of time because we have 10 days together, but also you have a game nearly every second, third day. So it's nearly hard to kind of get a full training that, you know, everybody's in it, you know, because a lot of girls, you know, with different levels in terms of recovery and, you know, playing games the day before and everything. So I think it's been difficult in that way to kind of get everybody out on the pitch 100% ready to go in, in terms of that. But I think, you know, we've managed it really, really well so far. Can we expect a change then in April from what we've seen up to this? Or is it, you mentioned about sort of tweaking things around, Is it are there new elements at play here that have been introduced now? Yeah, well, I think ultimately, like, you know, we look at the, the Sweden result and we look at the fact that, you know, we obviously lost the game. So, you know, ultimately, I think, you know, we have to start getting even a little bit more tight and defensively. And I think we've been, we have been very solid in that regard, but... I think we've been trying to, you know, I suppose limit the amount of mistakes that we make in the areas that we make them and then having, you know, the, the solution to problems. And I think that's one thing that we highlighted yesterday in um, analysis of the Poland game. There was a lot of, you know, problems that occurred, but we found solutions directly or very, very soon after and it didn't happen again. And, you know, that's something that will definitely be taken with us into the Sweden game. And again, I think the amount of fouls that we've been making has, you know, that's completely, you know, um, lowered, which is another good thing. You know, if you're keeping good teams, keeping them out, and you know, keeping your discipline, I think that's also something that would be brilliant to take into the Sweden game. When you consider how big and tall that they are, you know, they're very, very strong in the air. So I suppose they're little things. Um, what we're definitely going to be taking in, and again, I think that's the most important thing is that we're keeping ourselves defensively solid, and then obviously over the next few days, we'll hopefully be building on that. Um, you know, the attack side of things as well. It's really interesting looking at the, the makeup of the Ireland squad, not just this one, Amber, but all the ones that we've seen over the last little while. You've got players obviously playing in the United States, in Ireland, in England, obviously in, in Germany. How does that come together in terms of a melting pot of styles? Is, is it noticeably different, the players coming from slightly different backgrounds or slightly different recent experiences on the pitch? 
you know what actually we were literally just having this conversation yesterday you know i find that you know it's so different how i come in here from you know what we do in cologne and then what fear of my dash you to do here is you know completely different and everybody is coming from that as you said different different teams different clubs different countries as well every country has different playing styles and i think it actually kind of gives you a nice little mix of things as well because you know there might be something you do that might be beneficial but there might be something else someone else does that can also add i suppose to your side of the game and also to your team's side of the game and i think it's good to have that kind of um, variety of, of, of playing styles but you know i think that's definitely a challenge that i'll have to commend the coaching staff on they're trying to fine tune everything then to get us all as various as you know singing off the same hymn sheet and you know that can be that can be a very difficult thing to do as you said it's so diverse but I think definitely if you look at the polling game, I think, you know, there was a there was a strong cohesion in the team and there was a fluidity to our play. And you know, you wouldn't look at that and say, God, there's a lot of these girls playing different places. You know, I think you would look at it and say that you can say that they're all as I said, play uh, singing off the same sheet. How does the style of play that you're playing with Cologne differ to the other styles of play that are being brought into the Ireland camp? I suppose like in, in for me in Cologne, I find that the striker has a very, you know, a very, very strong defensive role in the terms of, you know, our coach in Cologne is very vocal about the players, everybody attacks, but everybody gets back and that can involve a lot of long, long, heavy sprints and, you know, dropping back to the edge of the box at times and picking up players and, you know, not saying that doesn't happen here, but, you know, Fair puts a you know a lot of um, emphasis on that everybody should have a player and everybody should have a role, but she doesn't want you know um, against Poland she didn't want Kira to come back to the edge of the box to pick up somebody if uh, Megan Connolly was going to be free. You know she wants that communication that you pass players on and all. Where I suppose in, in my sense that you know I nearly if my player drops I nearly would drop with my player and I suppose as well you know we definitely have um, a lot more ball here than we would uh, with the, with Cologne sometimes. You know, some games it's been good, but as I said, every every country has different playing styles, but there's also things at Cologne that I think are good um, and benefit me as a player, and there's things here that benefit me as a player. So it's about trying to find that match and obviously giving the best of the team, whichever team it is. And even within the Ireland camp, Amber, is there is there a sense within within the team that there might be different styles in the sense that, like you were mentioning about Sweden, and maybe things need to be a bit tighter. I think uh, going there to play a team of that quality that's entirely understandable. But that, like maybe one of the criticisms of the team uh, over the last little while has been that we haven't against the likes of a Georgia or a Finland at times. Maybe Georgia is a bad example, uh, but against some of the teams that we should be maybe a little bit more offensive against, particularly in some of the home matches that we haven't been. Is there a sense that we can all also adapt into that style when needed? Yeah, I think so. I think it has to be. Um, I think that, you know, I think Ireland, Irish football teams have always been renowned for being so defensive. Um, I suppose counter-attacks and everything is something that, you know, is always kind of, it's the name that kind of sticks with you. But I think ultimately that we know that we're making the steps forward. And I think that when you, when we went away to Finland, you know, ultimately, coming away with three points was, you know, a huge, huge, huge achievement. And not saying that we didn't believe that, but, you know, ultimately our goal going into that game is to make sure we don't concede. And then when you don't concede, you know, you're, you obviously then you have your opportunity then to get a point out of the game or get three points out of the game. And I think that's never going to change. You know, every game we play, first thing that we say is we don't concede, mm. you know, and I think with that, you know, building the confidence, again, getting results like the, I like against the likes of Finland and even on, on Wednesday against Poland, it just gives you that little bit more confidence and with confidence comes the belief. And I think when, when the belief comes in, you know, there's no reason why then we can't say, well, we're going to be a little bit more attacking against the likes of Finland and Poland and teams like that. So um, I think we don't have to, um, I suppose, go an all out attack against a team like Sweden. I don't think that that's the you know, that's the top international level that we're at yet, but I don't see why we can't get to that level. I think that we have to, you know, Bear has been saying a lot this week to know our limits. And I think that's something that we definitely realise against a team like Sweden. You know, we have to be very disciplined defensively, but also when we have an opportunity to go forward, we're definitely going to, you know, make sure that we're taking it as well. You, uh, from your own point of view, um, you got 10 minutes um, in the win over Poland. You got 15 minutes and a goal, obviously, against Georgia back in November. And you played an hour in that win, that uh, almost benchmark win in some ways against um, Australia as well at the, the before the campaign began. 
Um, is that a frustration for you to be sort of in and out? Does it make you more determined around the around the pitch? Or would you like to get? I presume you would love to get the opportunity to to get out there more of those competitive games and show them what you're about. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, everybody wants to play. But like as I said at the start, you know, tomorrow is an opportunity for for me to get that 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 um, opportunity to play. Um, Bear is going to rotate the team a lot tomorrow, so I think that you'll see a, a lot of new faces in the in the starting eleven tomorrow. And that for me is again, it's an opportunity to play, but also you know, it's a very highly competitive environment, as I've said here. And there is there's absolutely no frustration. I think everybody wants to play, and you know, I'm one of the luckier ones that gets game time, and some other players don't. You know, so mm. I think ultimately it's a team. I think you come down to that, and I think Vera picks the team that she believes is best for that match or that occasion, and. You know, at the end of the day, you have a lot of players at this at this time. We have 27 players here, all looking to be number one to 11. You know, so it's it does take a lot of work, and it. I think you do have to be very patient with it. You know, and I think if I look at my before Christmas, you know, I wasn't playing a lot with Cologne, so it, you know, in many ways, I didn't have an expectation that I was going to come into international games and be a guaranteed starter because that's just not the way it works. The same way I know that if I play and we give week out, that doesn't also mean I'm a guaranteed starter. Um, I think you just have to keep really positive. You have to make sure that you're giving the team everything. And if you get 10 minutes, if you get 20 minutes, that you make sure that it's the best 20 minutes, 10 minutes that you can give. And, you know, definitely so far, I've definitely been happy, um, happy with it. And I'm just always constantly looking to push on. And thankfully, I have great teammates around me here that are, are doing the same. You know, they push you on the field and off it. And I think when you have that level of squad and that level of togetherness in the team, you know, I think even the players that don't play, they feel part of it and you know for me that is the most important thing and you know now tomorrow hopefully a lot of us will get our opportunity and you know when you get your opportunity i think now the pressure's on to, to take it but pressure in a good way not obviously pressure in a bad way yeah and i know that a lot of fans were left disappointed for the polling game as well a lot of fans here who were hoping to see it and for technical reasons um, it never materialised. Is can you do you uh, and given that you've you're saying that hopefully you'll get a lot of game time. Obviously uh, tomorrow, um, I presume you'll be wanting friends and family to have a look at that. If the players, do you go and have a chat with somebody about that? Is there? I'm sure it's as frustrating for you guys as it is for everybody else. Yeah, yeah. Of course, it was it was frustration. It was not something that. Um, you know, I suppose, I think ultimately we were talking about it the day before that it was such a, um, it was such a, sorry, there's a few guards here hanging around when they know they shouldn't be. Uh, <laughs> but, um, no, so it, it was obviously, it was a frustrating, of course, you know, I had sent the, the link to a lot of um, family and friends, but, you know, I think you have to look at it, you know, a few years ago, playing a friendly that were playing in a friendly competition, you know, there would not have been a demand for people to watch the stream and people to watch the game. And I think that is just, in many ways, yes, of course, it was disappointing that it, it didn't work out. But, you know, I've been um, reassured that it will be, everything will be working and ready for, for Saturday night. And I think that we've come such a long way and, and even off the field stuff. And that's, I think that's a prime example of it. You know, the amount of tweets and texts that I received, you know, when people talking about, you know, why is there not a link? And I think that's such a, it's such a huge thing. You know, I think that's progress in itself. Um, I think it, it keeps the standards for everybody high that, you know, there's not going to be, you know, if, there, if there's games that aren't televised, there's not shown, there's going to be questions asked. And I think that's just the demand that people have to watch us and, you know, we hope now that the standards, you know, with that will, will keep high as they, as they have been up to this point. And hopefully um, what happened on Wednesday won't happen again with, with this team. Yeah, Amber, listen, uh, if and when you get your opportunity tomorrow, very best to look at it and uh, continued success. Thanks a million for jumping on the line this morning. Thanks very much, Laz. Thank you. Amber Barrett of Cologne and the Republic of Ireland there looking ahead to the uh, clash with Russia tomorrow and uh, potentially into a final as well. I think it'll be next Tuesday. Uh, they'll be into a game either way, uh, potentially a final um, and uh, opposition TBC.